work with Aqua Security. Um, we help enterprises secure their cloud native deployments. And I look after the open source tools that, that we build there. Uh, and I have been involved in, with kind of containers and container security for, for quite a few years now. Uh, so earlier this year, uh, I published the, this book with O'Reilly, Container Security. Uh, you can you know, buy this from all good bookshops, um, but you can also download a free electronic copy. So if you follow that link, um, you know, don't let price be an obstacle if you're interested in, in, you know, in the material that we're covering. So these are the different areas that I kind of have prepared that I think we can, we can talk about. Uh, we have a poll, so maybe we can open that poll so you can start voting on these options. And while you're voting, I'll just very, at a high level, talk a little bit about these options. So they're kind of in the order of things that you can do at build time through to, um, you know, at the end, things that happen at runtime. Uh, for most of these, I have some demos so we can uh, uh, explore which ones you, uh, you know, we can, we can dive into them. I, as we go through each one of these topics, uh, let's do Q&A about that topic because they're all quite different. And uh, yeah, so just go ahead and vote on whichever thing you think looks interesting to you. Can you prevent container drift? Now, in order to uh, talk about this, I probably need to describe what container drift is briefly. And this is the idea that your running container should only contain executable code that was in the container image when you built it. Uh, one of the other questions, uh, we'll, if we vote for it, we'll talk about like how it will show an example of bad practice involving adding code to your um, container at runtime. Now, there are lots of reasons why seeing executable code sort of appear in your container at runtime is a bad idea. Uh, the two main ones I'm going to talk about. One is uh, anything that wasn't in your container image at, when it was built couldn't be scanned, hasn't been through whatever testing you might do on your container images, whatever scanning you might do, any verification you might do on your container image. If you subsequently have different code in that, in your running container, it hasn't been through that testing. And that change between what's in the image and what's running is what we call container drift. And um, in this demo, I'm also going to show you, and there is a sort of disclaimer here that it isn't an open source thing. It's, it's Aqua's proprietary tool for preventing container drift. Uh, let's go to a demo. Great. So as you can see, we've got an instance of Nginx running in my little Kubernetes cluster here. And I could exec into that. Oh, I need to run a shell. Okay, so now I am, I have a, a, a terminal inside that container. And Nginx is an interesting example because essentially it only runs thing. It should only really be running, uh, oh, I don't even have PS, so I can't, um, look at it, but it only is running uh, an executable called Nginx. But there are lots of other uh, executables in this image. So I could run things like, well, I've just run ls, for example. Now, I said there were two reasons why it's a bad, uh, a bad thing to see image drift. And the first was that you couldn't test anything that wasn't in the image. The second is that the most common attacks that we see these days that our research team sees are essentially people stealing resources to run cryptocurrency mining. And in order to do that, they find ways to insert a cryptocurrency miner into your system somewhere. We're talking about containers. So a lot of the time they're either disrupting the supply chain to add a cryptocurrency miner into an image or they are finding a way to um, attack a running container and insert cryptocurrency miner. I'm not going to use a cryptocurrency miner today, 
but I could just create my own little executable. Um, so I'm just going to create a little shell script. Um, we'll run bash and we'll just say, okay, hello, Gotopia. In the file. Okay, and I need to make that file executable. And now I can run this. And it's not harmful, I haven't done anything bad, but I have created container drift here. I've added an executable to this container that wasn't there when I first deployed it. And although my script doesn't do anything harmful, it could have done. I could have put something much more uh, nefarious there. So this is where we get to drift prevention. And this is um, essentially when I very first joined Aqua, this is the thing that I saw three years ago. I saw a you know, demo of it and I thought, well, this is really clever. I want to get involved with this company. So uh, we have, here's my uh, Nginx pod running. And if I go in here, in here, I think I should find, yes. Inside Aqua, we have associated it with an image runtime profile called Nginx. And this is basically saying, this profile is how I expect Nginx images to behave. There's lots of different things that we can do inside that profile. Um, here is the profile. One of the things that I've ticked here is enable drift prevention, which as you can see here is prevent executables that are not in the original image from running. And I've also got a set of executables that I have allowed. So anything outside of that set of executables is not allowed. Plus anything that wasn't in the image when we scanned it before it was even deployed is not allowed. Now I've just showed you that I've been perfectly able to run that, um, yeah, I've been able to create drift and I've been able to run that executable. The reason why I've been able to do that is because I'm currently running this profile in audit mode. And if I go to my audit log, we should see, let's just make sure this is refreshed, yeah. So we should see here some things like, uh, here's a detection log showing that I tried, well, I did run uh, the try this executable, and that wasn't one of the allowed executables. We should also see the same uh, running that executable also triggered this drift prevention security control. So we can detect that it's happening, but things can get really powerful if we go into enforcement mode. So I just need to turn this profile into enforce mode. And now if I go back to my container, I get permission denied. And anything that I try to do that is not one of the permitted executables inside this container, anything that's associated with that profile is now going to be blocked. So even if an attacker were able to insert executable code somehow into this image, by using this drift prevention control, we can prevent it from happening. So um, I think that's like super powerful. And if you want to prevent um, attacks at runtime, you know, a solution like this is incredibly powerful. And it's pretty easy with containers to profile them and determine what the normal set of executables is inside a container, because like, like in this example, we would normally only expect to see Nginx running inside an Nginx container. In your application containers, you normally only expect to see your application running. 